Approximately 50 million Americans suffer from allergies, which can lead to allergy eyes. In this episode of Aki Talk, optometrist Rachel Pollock tells us all about ocular allergies, symptoms to look for, ways to avoid those symptoms, and different treatment options. Hello and welcome to Aki Talk. Today we're going to be having a conversation with optometrist Rachel Pollock. Doctor, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. To get us started, will you tell us a little bit about your background and your specialty? Sure. So I graduated from SUNY College of Optometry in 2018, um, and I currently own a private practice in Long Island, New York. Um, I would say we're definitely a primary care practice. We pride ourselves in really treating patients of all ages, oftentimes many generations in the same family. So it's really fun when I get to see the babies, the parents, and even the grandparents all um, in one go. Um, and I would say most of our patients come in starting out for vision concerns, but we really do um, offer a full scope optometry. So we do a lot of glasses and contact lenses, but we do full medical treatment as well, whether that's dry eyes, allergies, um, myopia control, glaucoma. We have a lot of diabetics. So we really try to treat the whole patient and get them seen for what they need. Well, that sounds pretty wonderful. Uh, for today's conversation, we were hoping you could discuss ocular allergies with us. What exactly are ocular allergies? Sure. So that's a really important topic, especially where I am in New York. We're kind of just getting to the end of a particularly brutal allergy season. Um, so a lot of patients had a really hard time this year. Um, allergies can start in patients as young as four years old and oftentimes will accompany them all the way through adulthood. So it's really important to diagnose and really manage them accurately. Um, on a cellular level, allergies occur when um, an irritant or an allergen gets into the eye and that causes the mast cells in the conjunctiva, the conjunctiva is like that pink fleshy area in your eye, um, to release histamine. And that starts a whole cascade of inflammation, um, which can really lead to a lot of discomfort in patients. So you just mentioned inflammation. Outside of that, what are uh, some of the other symptoms patients can be looking for to alert them that they might be suffering from ocular allergies? So I would say by far the most common symptom is itch. Patients just complain that their eyes are itching, itching, itching. Um, definitely redness, swelling, um, particularly of the lids, sometimes an inferior darkening of the inferior lids, which is called an allergic shiner. Um, excessive tearing is a big one. Um, redness, those are all very common symptoms of allergies. Those are also pretty common symptoms. How can a patient tell if it's allergies or if it's maybe something else contributing to their symptoms? Is there any way for them to know? So usually in allergies will be bilateral. So that's both eyes as opposed to just one eye. Um, it's usually not contagious. So, you know, if it was somebody in the eye had a pink, someone in the family had a pink eye and two days later you do, that's probably more of a viral infection versus allergies. Um, oftentimes if it's like a seasonal allergy, it'll come with other symptoms like runny nose, sneezing, you know, they'll know it's that time of year. Um, but if you're not sure when you come to the eye doctor and we're looking under the slit lamp, that's our microscope, um, there are certain things that we would look for. So the appearance of the inflammation will be a little bit different than a viral infection. Um, the discharge will be more clear and watery usually versus like a green mucousy. Um, sometimes with severe allergies, you can have like a white stringy discharge, but it's a little bit different than a bacterial or a viral infection, I would say. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So what are some of the common uh, attributing factors to ocular allergies? What are the things that cause them to exacerbate the way they do? So it's really all about figuring out what the person's allergic to and then um, minimizing the environmental exposure. So when it comes to managing allergies, there's really, you know, a few main things we like to do. Um, so like I say, the first thing is going to be to limit the exposure. So depending on what the allergen is, we're going to do that in different ways. Um, if it is something seasonal, so like pollen, weeds, things like that, um, first thing is wearing either glasses or sunglasses outside just to kind of minimize what's coming into the eye to begin with. Uh, so that's really important. If somebody's a contact lens wearer, we want to make sure they're in a daily disposable lens versus a reusable lens. Um, that way we're not having, you know, day after day allergens and pollutants building up on that lens, which is going to just exacerbate anything. Um, 
if it's again a spring allergy, as much as it's tempting to keep those windows wide open on those beautiful days, you really want to keep those windows closed, um, keep your environment as clean as possible, try to avoid carpets or heavy upholstery that can really attract allergies and dust. Um, so number one is always going to be like limit the exposure. Um, if it's a substance, you know, if you know you're allergic to a particularly mascara or a particular sunscreen, obviously try not to use it. So can ocular allergies be year round or are they typically seasonal? So there's many different types of allergies. I think by far the most common would be the seasonal. So those tend to be the worst around springtime. A lot of people will get a second um, kind of thing at fall. Um, but other common allergies can be environmental. So some people are allergic to dust. Um, unfortunately for some, it could be a pet. So, you know, cats and dogs are really common ones. Um, what we're seeing very commonly now actually is, you know, with false lashes, a lot of people will get like an acute allergic reaction to the glue. So you always want to be careful with those. Make sure, you know, don't do it the day before your wedding or at least not for the first time. So you always want to be careful with things like that. Um, so it really depends on what the person is allergic to, how often those symptoms are going to um, come out. So can ocular allergies actually impact your vision? So with mild allergies, they don't usually, um, but as they get a little bit more severe, they can definitely have an impact. Um, if the eyes are getting very watery, that'll cause temporary blur. Um, just seeing through those tears won't be as clear. Um, with prolonged eye rubbing, that can happen from a lot of itchiness. Um, there's an association with a condition called keratoconus. Keratoconus occurs when there's a weakening in the cornea. That's the front surface of the eye. Um, and that can lead to long-term distorted vision, blurred vision, um, not a particularly fun condition. So what would be a standard treatment protocol? What, what's common for somebody who comes in with ocular allergies? What would you recommend to them? So first we talk about, um, like you say, limiting the exposure. So whether that's going to be wearing sunglasses outside, um, you know, not spending all day outside if it's a particularly bad pollen day, um, daily disposable contact lenses, um, definitely keeping the whole area around the eye very clean. So I love the OcuSoft lid wipes that you guys have. Um, those are really great. Um, I usually recommend them year round for my patients at least once a day, but during heavy allergy season twice a day to really clean those lids and lashes and remove any buildup of any irritants that are coming on it throughout the day. Um, so that's number one, I would say. Um, number two would be an antihistamine eye drop. Um, I usually recommend a second generation antihistamine. Um, those have the effects of immediately helping really that itch and that redness and that tearing. And they also have a mast cell stabilizer effect. So that'll help even symptoms, prevent symptoms like two weeks down the line. Um, olopatidine is a really good ingredient. It's available pretty readily over the counter these days. Um, I believe that's the active ingredient in retain allergy, which is a really good one. Um, I'll oftentimes recommend that to my patients at least twice, about twice a day during the heavy allergy season. You don't want to go more frequently than that because they can sometimes cause dry eyes if used too much. Um, but definitely twice a day during that heavy allergy season. Um, next thing I would recommend is some artificial tears. If you feel like if the patient feels like they need a little bit of relief in between that drop, um, I still have this rhyme in my head. The solution to, um, pollution is dilution. So while an artificial tear is not necessarily, um, doing anything for the itch, it's just helping to, again, clean out that eye, refresh it and remove any allergens and prevent, um, again, that whole cascade of inflammation. So I would say ocularly, those are the, um, the main things that I would start with. Um, if a patient is still having symptoms, though, and uncomfortable, then we will um, sometimes go to an oral antihistamine. So like an Zyrtec or a Loratadine, any of those over the counters will help with the, over the, with the ocular symptoms as well. Um, for flare ups, when it gets just like really bad and it's not enough, we will do a short term course of a steroid in the eye. Um, and that'll really help to just get rid of those symptoms, have the patient feeling better fast. Um, but we don't recommend steroids long term for patients because they can have side effects. Um, so those I would say are the mainstays of treatment. Um, once in a while for a patient that does have like those year long allergies that it's just getting those constant inflammation, I will go to an immunomodulatory eye drop like a Zydra or a Restasis. So that's slightly off label, but I do find that sometimes that does help to target the inflammation in the eye from another aspect. 
And then again, for those really severe cases, I would refer to an allergist to consider um, doing those shots to kind of get over them in a long-term solution. So what are the consequences to a patient long-term if they do nothing? Like if you're suffering from ocular allergies, but you can't be bothered to go to your eye care professional, what, what happens to those patients? First of all, we don't want anybody growing up hating spring. It's the best time of year. You get the glorious weather, the sun's out, um, and it's a shame to really suffer through that and not be able to live your life to the fullest. Um, that's again for more mild cases. You know, for the more severe cases, um, we can, you know, with excessive eye rubbing, um, it is associated with that condition called keratoconus, which is that corneal thinning that can lead to permanent distortion of vision. Um, again, with severe cases, we can get corneal scarring um, from chronic inflammation on the eye, um, which can also lead to reduced vision in the future. Um, Tranta's dots is again, like a form of severe, you know, when we have the um, allergens just build up and inflammation in the eye can mainly corneal scarring and reduced vision. But I would say that's more for the severe, um, severe cases. So then I guess for the people who have uh, severe flare ups from time to time, is there anything specific for those people to help them reduce the occurrence of those or to prevent them from happening? So again, if you know you get them, I would definitely stay on that antihistamine eye drop because those will help to prevent the release of that histamine again. But you got to be on that about two weeks before it's coming. So you don't always know that. That's number one. If you know what the substance is, avoiding the substance is usually the easiest. Um, oftentimes that's easier said than done. Most people don't know exactly what they're allergic to. Um, but I would say it's really just staying on top of your regimen and at the first sign of symptoms, you know, getting a little bit aggressive with the treatment if you need to, um, to make you feel more comfortable. Well, thank you so much for going over all of that with us today. Is there anything else you would like to tell our audience about this? Um, I would say that ocular allergens are allergies are really common. Um, and your eye care professional is here to help you. A lot of times people don't think to go to the eye doctor, you know, they're either going to the primary care doctor who's just giving them, you know, an over the counter nasal spray or a, just a standard, um, and, uh, antihistamine pill. And oftentimes there's a lot more that we can do, um, to help you feel more comfortable, especially since eye itching and swelling is one of the, um, main, main symptoms of seasonal allergies. So if you're uncomfortable, definitely seek out your local eye doctor and we're here to help you. Well, thank you very much, doctor. We appreciate your time today. Of course. Thank you for having me.